Hey, Coach. Hi. How you doing, everybody? Um, appreciate you being here for the for the uh, opening press conference. I, I know we're doing this on Tuesday or on Monday. We typically done this on Tuesday, but it's going to work out good for uh, for us. Typically, Monday is a is an off day for practice with our players, and and uh, just gives us a chance to to kind of put the games behind us. Uh, as we get through them. So today's going to be a full work day for us. We're, we're going to be back out on the field in full gear, which will be the, the last practice that we, uh, that we do that before we head to Georgia State. And obviously looking forward to the opportunity to play and uh, to, to get a chance to run into somebody else that's not wearing the same color jersey as we are and, uh, and, and really find out what our team's all about. I'm, I'm really pleased with uh, how hard they've worked uh, just the pride that this team has, this program has, but we're facing a team that is extremely athletic, uh, very talented, very well coached. Uh, it's a team that's had a lot of success, uh, both in their conference as well as out of conference. Uh, won a bowl game last year, and uh, in a in a season where it was a really challenging year for everybody, um, they did a tremendous job. So it says a lot about the leadership and and uh, the players on their, on their team. So great respect for, for those guys. Uh, there's a lot of guys on that, that team that we're very familiar with. Uh, obviously, uh, recruiting the state of Georgia is, as hard as we do. Um, yeah, we, know, we know a lot of the names on that roster and, and uh, they've got a very good football team. So it's gonna take a tremendous effort. The last time we were there, we, we fell short and uh, we were awfully disappointed to, to uh, have to leave there with a loss. And, Hopefully we've improved some and we'll have a chance to play better and give ourselves a, a better opportunity to, to win the game in the end. As we get going with questions, if everyone could please use the raise your hand function, we'll get you in and we'll start with Rich DeMarco. Coach, how excited are you to begin this season after last year, everything your team had gone through and then this, this off season, how excited are you for Saturday? I look, I look forward to every season and, uh, and, and just a new team and a new, new personality new leaders and the, the challenge of, of putting together a team with a, a different roster. We lost some really good players off of last year's team. And uh, I, obviously uh, some guys we felt were, were pretty talented, but more than that, just good football players. Uh, and I think a team that was as well led from within the ranks as any team I've coached since I've been here. So we're going to miss some of those key guys, but, uh, but I think, Taking their place are some some really special guys that uh, that I think will do a good job this year and, uh, and and inspire and motivate their teammates and and hopefully perform well enough to to be able to compete with the teams we're playing. Hey, Coach, when do you anticipate making a decision on a starting quarterback for Saturday? Oh, I I, I think that's something that uh, we go into the game just feeling like we can play any of the quarterbacks that we have and. Uh, I, you know, I think that Tyre and Christian are probably at the top right now. And uh, I, I don't know what we'll do. It doesn't matter. It, it, it really, it, there's been a lot of people ask about that. I think people get really bent out of shape that I don't want to name a quarterback, but who cares? Who cares who the quarterback is, or the left guard is, or the, the, the field corner or the punter? They got to perform. And if we think they're good enough to help our team, then we're going to trot them out there and play. And uh, it, it, I don't know what it really matters. So uh, I promise you we'll have a guy in a quarterback. Sounds good. Thank you, Coach. Sal Interdonata. Hey, Coach, you talked about having this game in the state of Georgia. How important is that for your recruiting? Is there any benefits or impact for having an opener on the road in Georgia? I think being able to play in different parts of the country is, uh, is an advantage for us. And the fact that our, our schedule changes from year to year and we have a chance to be exposed to a lot of different conferences and a lot of different parts of the country, uh, that, that's an advantage for us. Georgia is a, is a big recruiting area for us. As you know, you look at our roster and you see all the Georgia guys on there. So it, uh, it's nice to be able to play in the Southeast where their parents can come see them play and, and, uh, and, and prospects maybe can look forward to the opportunity to, to play in, uh, in areas where they're, they're close to home. So 
uh, it, it, it's, it's just going to be great for our guys who are from the state of Georgia to, to be back there and be able to have their, their family and friends come and see them. Ken Kratzer. Afternoon, Coach. Uh, just uh, we talked a little bit Saturday about uh, the uh, the uh, Georgia State offense. We got a terrific quarterback, running backs, uh, wideouts. Uh, it looks like it's a, it's a, a, going to be an interesting challenge for your defense playing against a team that's pretty balanced, but really can throw the ball well. What 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 uh, what more have you seen in the Georgia State offense? This just the uh, the fact that they're very skilled and. Uh, and they do run the ball effectively that you know, being able to throw the ball is, is uh, important in most people's offenses, but I think it starts with being able to run the ball effectively. The teams that, that I think are, are the most difficult to defend are those that excel at running the football. And, uh, and that doesn't mean we don't, we don't have to stop the passing game. Certainly, you know, it can't be, uh, it can't be an all or nothing. You can stop all the run plays. You can't stop them on the pass plays, but, uh, they, they have the capability, obviously, with their running back, their offensive line, to be able to do that very effectively, run their quarterback. He's a, an out, outstanding athlete, and good with the ball in his hands. So there, there's there's a lot of teams that we've played over the course of my tenure here that have been very much like uh, the Georgia State team in, in their offense and their skill, and they're hard for us to defend. So it's gonna it's going to take a great effort, and it's going to be a real challenge for us. Thanks, Coach. Graham Knight, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Graham Knight from Behind the Lines. I'm sitting in for Aaron Summers, who you'll be glad to know made it through the hurricane in New Orleans. So uh, she sends her uh, greetings and salutations. Um, hey, so I, first I'm going to say I am going to hold you to your promise that there will be a player in the quarterback position on Saturday. So I'm mm -hmm. um, holding you to that. Um, but let me take you back two years. An interception on the three-yard line in the last minute of the game 28 21 how much does this frame this upcoming game is it become much more of a grudge match how do you approach that oh i don't know i mean it, it just we uh you know we had we had we had made some plays in that game and we made some mistakes in that game and i think they did too they just they made fewer mistakes than we did and uh and that that uh that interception we were we were driving and we had a guy wide open on the sideline and unfortunately we didn't find him and that happens. I mean, there's a lot for those guys to look at. And I, I think we were, we were just trying to push it down there and, and uh, get a guy to make a play. And unfortunately we didn't, they came up with the interception and, and secured the victory. So hopefully this time around, if we, we got a guy open, we'll find him and, uh, and we'll, we'll be able to make a play, but that's, you know, that's, it wasn't, it wasn't just that play. There were a lot of plays throughout that game that uh, we could have made and didn't, and uh, a lot of plays that they made and and uh, give them credit. So I think it just comes down to to two teams doing what they do, and hopefully we can run the ball effectively and do a good job stopping the run and uh, and play good on special teams. And hope that'll be good enough, and that that's uh, that's just really our style of play. So we're going to find out on Saturday. And, and like I said, it's going to be a real challenge because they've got a well-coached, very talented team that's had a lot of success. Joe, yeah, well, go ahead. And, I'm, and I'm glad Aaron's good. I'm glad she made it through the, through the storm. we got some families uh, of players down there, too, that are without power. And, and uh, it's a tough time down there. It's a, it's a struggle when those things happen. And Mother Nature uh, has her way of uh, kind of just – doing things on our on our own timeline so hopefully everybody get everybody will get through it safely yeah thank you same back to all the your players families as well uh i'll come back you can come back to me okay no problem joe icona good afternoon coach monk and joe icona with goblacknights.com um we know that freshman slot back laquan beanie has performed really well in the preseason uh is he or any of the other freshmen going to be on the travel squad for the derby state game this week Laquan's going to travel with us. Uh, Brian Burton's going to travel with us at linebacker. Um, let me uh, let me rattle my brain here. Uh, Trey Sophia is kind of on the bubble. He's a defensive lineman. We we may travel him. We're not certain yet. Um, and that may be it. That may be the uh, 
the extent of uh, of our young guys for this week. I anticipate that over the course of the season, we're going to have some guys that, that will start to improve and and work their way up the the uh, the depth chart and maybe overtake uh, some of the guys that are on the travel squad. But right now, it's it's a much more veteran group. But I I think that's probably to be expected this early in the year. Sal, Thanks, Coach. Sal, go ahead. Uh, Coach, um, seems like uh, Cole Talley's had a pretty good preseason. Uh, can you tell us what you've seen in him and what he might bring to the team in the kicking game? He has had a good uh, he has had a good preseason. Sal, it looks a lot like he did a couple years ago, just getting great lift on the ball on the, the field goals and PATs, which it, that's not easy to do when you're kicking off the ground. It, it's certainly a lot easier when we recruit guys uh, that are kicking off of a block in high school, and, and I, which I recommend. I think that's the best way to get the, the, the most distance and the best lift on a kick. Uh, but what they get into college uh, and they kick off the ground, it's, it's a lot more difficult. He's got a really strong leg and, uh, and he's, he just got himself in good physical condition and it's been a, a real battle between he and Moretzky all, all preseason camp. Both of those guys will travel and uh, we haven't decided how we're going to utilize both of them yet this week. Uh, if, if one guy will handle all the duties, if one will be a kickoff and one PAT field goal or, uh, or, or how that's going to shake out. But I, I think they both had a, a pretty good preseason. Are the Graham, Ken, and then Joe. Hey, Coach, I want to change this subject to leadership for a second. Talk to me a bit about your captains. You know, everyone's going to graduate from Army and become a leader. How do you select your captains? And then what do you ask from the leaders of your other leaders? Well, they, they all will have to lead. And they're all going to lead in their own way and, and lead uh, based on their personality. And, and I think in, in every group, uh, in every organization, there are leaders and there are some that just stand out among the others. And I think uh, our four captains were chosen by their teammates. We, we allow their, their, their teammates to select the captains, um, that those guys stood out. Now, e each, of the, each of the guys that is in a leadership position on our team, uh, I ask to fill out an application. So they actually apply for the job. And, and that doesn't in, just include the, the captains, but also those that are selected onto the leadership council. I think it's important that a guy wants to be in that leadership role. There's a lot of responsibility and, and frankly, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of things that they have to do from a leadership standpoint that put them in, a, in an uncomfortable position at times of having to, to reprimand teammates, correct, you know, take corrective action on teammates. Um, and that's, uh, that's not easy to do. It's not easy to do with your peers, especially. It's a lot easier for me. Uh, these players aren't, aren't my peers. So I, you know, I tell them, Here, here's what I expect. And when we fall short, I, it doesn't bother me at all to tell them. But it's, it's a little bit harder when it's one of them having to do it. Um, but all four of these guys do a really good job. And there's other guys on our team that, that uh, were selected under the leadership council that are in that senior class. Dean Powell, Jabari Laws, Noah Knapp, all of those guys uh, as well, I think, stand out as leaders uh, on this team. So that, that's, that's the case in their companies. If you, if you dive into West Point, uh, there's a, a, you know, four regiments. Uh, a hundred and, or I should say uh, nine companies in each regiment, 150 members of each company. So within each regiment, uh, there's, there's, there's a first captain. So that's the highest ranking senior on our campus. So among all the leaders, there's one, there's one first captain. Uh, and that first captain has a staff. So she's got a number of leaders that are selected from across the Corps. That, uh, that serve with her. There's regimental leaders, there are company leaders, and I think they, they stand out among their peers. So uh, just, just like any organization, these guys stood out enough that their, their teammates wanted to, to have them be out front and, and represent as captains. 
Graham, you can follow up, then we'll go close out with Ken and then Joe. Thank you. Hey, just one quick follow up. I asked the Georgia State coach just a second ago about leadership, and he says he recruits leadership. That's part of what they're looking for. They're looking at the captains um, and the leaders of those football teams. I'm just curious, how does that play into your recruiting? Is there are there any similarities there? Well, each one of our each one of our prospects, not not just the ones that are in the room here with us, but every prospect that we evaluate and then approve as, as a guy at, at the lowest level, just the, the area recruiting coach, the coach that recruits uh, the Atlanta area, which, which uh, you know, could be the, the coach that recruits Dallas or the coach that recruits Chicago or the coach that recruits the, the, the state of New Jersey. Uh, each one of those area coaches evaluates each prospect in his area that's recommended and if we feel like at that level, they're a good enough player that, that we're probably going to want to recruit them before they're passed along to anybody else. We, we do a lot of, uh, a lot of research. So we talk to their coaches, we talk to their guidance counselors and find out what kind of students they are, what kind of leader they are, competitor. Um, and we've got a number of questions that we ask that are the same so that we have an opportunity to be able to compare prospects from the same area or around the country. And, and we're trying to find the right people to join our program. I think everybody looks for that. And, and uh, so as, as Coach Elliott does, we just look for the right kind of guys that, uh, that we want to bring into this program. And then as we, as we go through the process, we find out more about them and feel like they're the, the, the kind of young man that's going to be a great fit for West Point, then the, the recruiting process continues. So uh, you know, sometimes we're, we're wrong, but most of the time, I think we, we got uh, a pretty good group of guys to, to, uh, to recruit from. Yeah, two more for Coach. Ken? Coach, hi. We talked uh, last week a little bit with uh, Assistant Coach Mike Beatty, uh, an Afghanistan veteran, about the news, the difficult news from overseas last week. How do you counsel your players, uh, talk to them about uh, what happens in the military when di difficult news, tragic news comes up, and knowing that they may be out on the front lines in a couple of years? Well, that, that prospect is very real for them. And it's, it's part of the commitment that they make to West Point. They have a lot of conversations in their classrooms. Uh, if you, if, for, for those that have ever had a chance and, and, and maybe nobody uh, that's, uh, that's, that's listening here has had a chance to, uh, to be in a classroom at West Point. But if, you, if you, you're able to do that, you'd find that there's some, some unique conversations that, that happen in those classrooms. It's not a typical college classroom setting. They start each class with some current events and they talk about the things that are going on in the world and how it affects our soldiers, how it affects West Point, and it spurs conversation about uh, about how it relates to them, and and perhaps even the subject that they're 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 getting ready to study. So there's a lot of those conversations going on, and and our guys are are uh, you know, they're they're very cognizant of the fact that this is the profession that they've they've chosen, and and it is their choice. And they're excited about it. Where, where I think a lot of people um, couldn't imagine being put into circumstances that are that are as trying as difficult as those of an American soldier. Our guys, they 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 have a passion for that. They want to do it, and uh, and thankfully we've got young men and women, uh, and and those that that serve in our military currently that want to do that. That have a love for country and and have a calling that's, that's something much bigger than themselves, that they wanna do that. So they're excited about the opportunity and, uh, and certainly curious. And, uh, and, and, and I'm sure at, at times you'll know, have apprehensions like anybody that, that would be thrown into a, a difficult situation. But that's what I admire about these young men and women at West Point and, uh, and all of our men and women that serve in the United States military. They're, their courage and, and, uh, 
in their conviction for, for the ideals and the, the values of this country that they're willing to go and do those difficult jobs that the rest of us aren't willing to do. And we're certainly proud of Mike uh, and all that he's done to serve our nation, what he continues to do to serve Gold Star families through Legacies Alive. Uh, and for, for those others uh, on our staff, which we have, we've got several uh, mem me members of our staff that have served, uh, that are currently serving or will serve uh, in the United States Army. So uh, it's, it's just, it's a, it's a real privilege to work among these American warriors and, and to know that we've got a team full of young men who are committed to, uh, to the service of, of our country. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Coach, uh, linebacker Spencer Jones is an important piece to the defense. Do you know when you and the staff will be able to evaluate him and make a determination on his status for Saturday? He, he's going to be practicing with us today uh, on a limited basis, but uh, we expect through the week that we're going to be able to add more and more each day as we go through the week, and, and uh, we anticipate that he's going to be healthy and, and ready to play on Saturday. So um, he's, he's had a lot of practice time. Uh, just as a player here through the course of his first year, all through spring ball. Unfortunately, he's missed some of this preseason camp, but uh, it's important we get him healthy so that it's not an injury that's going to be nagging uh, week in and week out throughout the year. It's, it's very difficult once we get going to be able to take that time away and just work on, on his health and, and, uh, and getting him back up to full speed. So, we're, we're going to include this week in, in uh, that process. And by the end of the week, we're hopeful that we're going to have him up to full speed. We're confident that, uh, that that's probably going to be the case. And last question for Coach Ken McNeil. Thanks, Hi, Jeff. Um, I'm sure when you go into a season every year, uh, you have different levels of comfort. How comfortable are you with this team headed in? And what's your gut feeling about this group? Oh, I don't know if I'm ever – comfortable um I'm, I'm always uh i'm always very anxious at this point in the season just not knowing who we're going to be and and uh what, what kind of football team we're going to have what, what's going to happen when when we face adversity what's going to happen uh when things go our way are we going to have the you know the professionalism and the and the uh the uh, don't flinch mentality to, to move on to the next play or the next series or the next game. And, and that's, that's all going to be revealed as we, as we get into the game this Saturday, as we go through the season. So uh, I really like our senior class. I think they're, they're tough. They're competitive. They, they are, uh, they have a high standard for excellence. And I like that they're not afraid to, uh, to live to that standard and, and hold others accountable to that standard. And that's important in, in having a successful team, in my opinion. Uh, how we'll perform is, uh, is a whole nother, it, it's a whole other conversation. And the bottom line is we've got to perform and, and we can be tough and we can play hard and we can care about the team and, 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 and be very selfless and, and do everything we can to have ourselves prepared. But bottom line, when 11 guys go out there on the field together, we've got to perform as a unit. And, uh, and hopefully we'll do that well this Saturday and as we go throughout the season.